and gentlemen, members of the Brigade of Midshipmen, and in particular, the class of 1967, the President of the United States. Admiral, officers, members of the Brigade, I hope you'll stand at ease. Perhaps the uh, plebe will we'll explain that to them. That comes later in the course. <laughs> I want to uh, express my very strong appreciation to all of those of you in the plebe class who've come into the Navy. I hope that uh, you realize how great is the dependence of our country upon the men who serve in our armed forces. I sometimes uh, think that they... Uh, the people of this country do not appreciate how secure we are because of the devotion of men and their wives and children who serve this country in far off places, in the sea, in the air, and on the ground, thousands and thousands of miles away from this country who make it possible for us all to uh, live in peace each day. Now, this country owes the greatest debt to our servicemen. In time of war, of course, there's a tremendous enthusiasm and pop outburst of popular feeling about those who fight and lead our wars, but it's sometimes different in peace. But I can assure uh, the people of this country from my own personal experience in the last uh, two and a half years that more than anything, more than anything, the fact that this country is secure and at peace, the fact that dozens of countries allied with us are free and at peace has been due to the military strength of the United States, and that strength has been directly due to the men who serve in our armed forces. So even though it may be at peace, in fact, most especially because it is at peace, I take this opportunity to express our appreciation to all of them, whether they're here at Annapolis or whether they're out of sight of land or underneath the sea. I want to express our strong hope that all of you who've come to the Academy as plebes will stay with the Navy. I can think of no more rewarding a career. You will have a chance in the next 10, 20, and 30 years to serve the cause of freedom and your country all over the globe, to hold positions of the highest responsibility, to recognize that upon your good judgment in many cases may well rest not only the well-being of the men with whom you serve, but also in a very real sense the security of your country. I can imagine no more rewarding a career. And any man who may be asked in this century what he did to make his life worthwhile, I think, can respond with a good deal of pride and satisfaction. I served in the United States Navy. So we uh, congratulate you all. This is a hard uh, job, particularly now, as you make the change. But I think uh, it develops in you those qualities which we like to see in our country, which we take pride in. I'm sure you're going to stay with it. I'm sure you're going to be able by what you're now going through to find the means to command others. So I express our very best wishes to you and to tell you that uh, though you will be serving uh, in the Navy in days when most of those who hold public office have long gone from it, I can assure you in 1963 that your services are needed, that your opportunities are unlimited, and that if I were a young man in 1963, I can imagine no place to be better than right here at this academy or at West Point or in the Air Force or in some other place beginning a career of service to the United States. There's an older story which I will close with which will give you very valuable advice as you follow a naval career about a yeoman who watched a lieutenant to begin a meteoric career in the Navy and he always used to go in every morning and open up his drawer and pick out a piece of paper and look at it, put it back 
became a lieutenant commander, youngest captain, youngest admiral, youngest commander of the Navy. Finally, one day he had a heart attack. The old man said, well, I want to see what's in that paper. It might help me. So he went over and opened up the safe and pulled out the paper. And it said, left port, right starboard. You can remember that. Your career is assured. Thank you. I now propose three cheers for the Commander-in-Chief. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! All right, let's hear it! Thank you. The view of, uh, the view of that, uh, that warm cheer, I'd like to, uh, using the full powers of the office, to grant amnesty whoever needs it, whoever needs it, whoever deserves it.